we are talking about three fundamental dimensions without which nothing can happen in existence. Just three fundamental forces, three fundamental qualities playing such a huge game. They are different only on the surface. Deep down, it's all the same thing. So, modern scientists in their own language, they're saying Shiva is holding everything together. See, Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh means don't think of three people, one floating on the clouds, another sitting on top of the mountain, another doing something else. We are not talking about three people. We are talking about three fundamental dimensions without which nothing can happen in existence. If you look at these stories closely enough, Brahma is the creative force. Is there creation in the existence? Yes. For sure. Vishnu is the maintenance. <coughs> is maintenance happening? I'm not talking about Delhi, I'm talking about creation. <laughs> there maintenance happening. Definitely there is destruction, isn't it? Within your body right now, millions of cells are dying. Many, millions of new cells are being created and millions are being… billions are being maintained, isn't it? So you are a manifestation of these three forces. So is the planet, so is the solar system, so is the whole creation. It is a manifestation of these three aspects of creation, maintenance and destruction. You might have gotten little attached to Shiva and become little destructive, But all the three are functioning in some proportion, isn't it? And that is the basis of the whole cosmos and also the macro is also the same three forces. The micro is also the same three forces. The very atom has the same three forces and the very cosmos has the same three forces. It is quite a simple creation, I'm telling you. Just three fundamental forces, three fundamental qualities playing such a huge game. Huge game, isn't it? Big time, isn't it? Big time game, just three forces. Doing great job with just three. So these three are three, but if you go deep enough, it's just one hand, just like that it's just one. That is the significance. Everywhere you see a trishul, don't think it's a weapon. <laughs> I know some people are using it as a weapon. It's quite a lousy weapon if you want a weapon, I'm telling you. If you want to kill somebody, trishul is a bad weapon. Only people who do not know anything about fighting will carry a trishul and go. <laughs> Tell me yes or no. Huh? Can you poke anybody with a trishul like this? <laughs> trishul is not a weapon, it's a symbolism. Now Shiva carries a trishul not because he wants to fight with you. His son carries a spear, that is a fighting weapon. He fought and fought and fought, Kartikeya went on fi fighting. Shiva never fought because this is just a symbol. This is to show you, on the surface it's all three, Deep down everything is one, constantly indicating this. You thinking it's a weapon, no, it's not a weapon. <laughs> it doesn't make a sensible weapon, isn't it? Unless you want to push people. <laughs> if you want to pierce people, it's not a good weapon, isn't <laughs> it? So, these three, they are different only on the surface. Deep down, it's all the same thing, but the three manifestations are distinctly there in the creation in all aspects, from proton, neutron, electron to many, many, many other levels of manifestation, it is always there. 
So, what is the significance of Mahateva means, this is these three, but when all of them are functioning as one, he is Mahadeva. These are three devas. When all of them are functioning as one, it is a Mahadeva. So we call the destroyer the Mahadeva because this is about <clears throat> Brahma is about the genesis. Vishnu is about the organization of the creation. Shiva is oblivion. These two, creation and maintenance, only exist in the lap of the oblivion. It is the empty space in the creation, which is the most expansive thing, limitless thing, and which is the lap in which creation happens and disappears, isn't it? Happens, conducts itself and falls apart, all happens in the lap of Shiva because he is oblivion. Shiva means that which is not, Shiva means that which is not. So that which is not we bow down because that is the thing. Today, modern science is slowly veering towards that. They believed some time ago the, you know, the electromagnetic forces and the nuclear forces and gravity are everything. Now as they dug deeper, 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 do you know there is no explanation for gravity in modern science even today. Isaac ne Newton only told you apple falls down, which every village boy knew. Unfortunately it falls down, not up. He gave no explanation, no mathematical background to it. Simply he said it falls down, nothing else. And since then, they have been trying to find out. They know at least enough about the other forces. Gravity is one thing which has freaked some modern science. They're not able to find out why gravity works the way it works. So today one explanation they're talking about is, they believed at one time it's the gravity of the sun which is holding all the planets together, it is the gravity of something else holding all the galaxies together. Now they're saying that there is some dark force all over the place. Due to lack of description, because they can't make out any quality of that, they're calling it a dark force. And it is this dark force which seems to be keeping everything in place. They do not know what is the nature of this force. It is called as dark energy or dark force. This dark energy, you know we always call Shiva as the dark one. Yes? He is always referred to as the dark one. His night is the darkest night in the month. So, modern scientists in their own language are saying Shiva is holding everything together. Now I don't want you to imagine one man sitting there and holding everything together. That's not what it is. Shiva means that which is not. So that which is not is held as the highest because that which is not is the largest manifestation in creation, isn't it so? If you look up in the sky, do you ever do it? Do you ever do it? Okay. I believe you, all right <laughs> So if you look up in the sky, because your visual apparatus are made in a certain way, you will think the sky is full of stars. That's not the reality. The largest thing out there is empty darkness, isn't it? The galaxies that you see there are just small specks. Rest, the vast expanse is nothing, isn't it? So that is what we are referring to as Shiva. But there are many aspects to this. This is because we are a dialectical culture, because we know existence is seamless. You think there is a boundary line between solar system and the rest of the galaxy? No. Between one galaxy and another galaxy, there is a boundary line, LOC. There is no such thing. It is just a seamless existence. So, we are a dialectical culture where it is seamless. 
So I will be talking about Shiva. When I say Shiva, you have to make out which Shiva I am talking about. I say Shiva referring to the boundless nothing. I say Shiva and I refer to the Adi Yogi. I say Shiva and I'm talking about a laborer who's walking on the street right now whose name is Shiva. All these things we do at the same time. And this is the reason. If to look up at the boundless nothingness, we do the same thing. If you look at the Adi Yogi, we will do the same thing. If the laborer Shiva is walking around here, he may be illiterate, he may be so much… so many things or maybe nothing, then also we do the same thing because we know without the dark energy that you're referring to, without Shiva holding it, even this body will not have it in integrity, it'll all burst out. So, when I look at you, I do the same thing. See, this is the only way. I want you to understand, this is the only place where such a thing is there. You're doing it unconsciously, so it's meaningless. What you do to your gods, you're doing to everybody, isn't it? The idea is, this person may not know what is the source of his making, but I want to recognize that. He may not know that the creator is throbbing within himself, but it is my prerogative to see it. If I see it, it makes a difference for me. If he sees it, it will do wonders for him, but now I want to see it. So what you do to your God, the same thing you do to your neighbor, the same thing you do, you do to your servant, the same thing you do to a cow or an elephant or a stone or whatever. Because you don't want to miss an opportunity, you want to make an effort wherever you are to see that the source of creation is constantly throbbing in every piece of creation and nobody can deny it, isn't it? Even modern science cannot deny it that whatever is the source of creation is also functioning in a tiny little invisible atom, isn't it so?